All right, guys, I got my set of six inch portals for the Rubicon. Went with the cast. Casting is a little funny looking. Um, whatever, I'm sure it's fine. Um, why did I go with cast and why did I go with six inch? Um, well, I've always ran cast. I never broke one. Um, never had any housing issues, right? I've had shaft issues with my Gen 1s. I had leaks, but my Gen 3s, my four inches and my eight inches were pretty good. So this is my fourth set of portals. Um, first set of six inches. So I went with six inches because I wanted to have the option to run an 18 or a 20 inch wheel. Um, that comes in handy on an ATV when you don't want to run super monster sizes. Uh, and I'm swapping the input gears to make them work on a Rubicon. And so I actually ordered a portal set off of a Pioneer 1000 because I might buy one of those. So if I do, I'll have the portals, I'll have all the brackets and the bolts and all this stuff, the brakes, lines. We're gonna start with the Rubicon first and I'm using custom brackets for that. Those aren't here yet either, but I did get my ball joints for those custom brackets and they are pretty beefy. Use the Dirt Mafias or something, but they're, you know, Keller style screw in ball joints for a Honda, which is amazing. Um, now I don't think you can run these on just any Honda. Uh, I think the reason I can run them is because I'm using his aftermarket plates. So pretty cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a few more parts in, a lot of shiny stuff on the bench here. Let me walk you through what we're doing. So we took one of our six inch Pioneer 1000 boxes and opened it up. This is what it looks like inside. Um, big beefy gears. The Gen 3s have these neat bearings with a race that sits on the idler gear. Um, pretty sealed, pretty beefy. Giant shafts, absolutely giant. It was kind of hard to open up this box. I found the best way to do it was to pick it up from the cover with two pairs of pliers and just tap it and it opened up. But um, this gear is a little bit of a press fit into both sides of the case bearings. So um, these are Pioneer 1000 portals that we're trying to run on a Pioneer 500, which really means we're trying to run them on a Rubicon. So the way to do that with Pioneer 500 portals is to take your input gears and put the front ones in the rear and the rear ones in the front. Um, and that gives you the right splines for the axles. So this is the Pioneer 1000 input gear. As you can see, way too big splines for either one of these axles. So I'm gonna hold on to these. They're not gonna get used for this part of the, this build. Um, but these gears are identical in all the mating ways to the P500 gears. You can put it next to them and you can look at it. Very similar. So the P500 is a DG004S for the, I believe it's the front um, gears. Unfortunately, I got four of the same gears. I should have two fronts and two rears. So I got to call Super ATV about that. Um, not a huge deal because I have time. I'm not really waiting on it. This is why you inventory your parts as soon as you get them and you do fit checks. Same should I do at work all the time. As soon as you get a part, you check it. The sooner you know you have the wrong part, the better. So I got to get on the phone with some people today and get get the two right gears coming because I think I have four of the same gear and that's not how it should be. Um, so that's one little issue, but back to this. So this is the input gear, meaning the top gear, meaning the drive gear. This is what your axle plugs into. Your axle turns this gear, which turns the idler gear, which turns the big gear. Now these are 45% reduction boxes. So the ratio is determined by this teeth count to this teeth count. This guy's an idler, it doesn't do anything. So if you divide this teeth by this teeth, you get your true ratio. So here's a good picture with all the teeth in it. If you wanna go ahead and calculate that yourself, I think it's like 1.82, so it's like an 82% reduction. Um, there's a shaft, very big and pretty. Um, one thing I noticed that was kind of cool, if you look on this side of the box, it's stamped 45 right there, for 45%, I assume. Um, yeah, so let me throw one of the Pioneer 500 gears in here and show you what I'm talking about. So um, the gear goes with the spline side down. And that actually drops in there a lot easier than this one does for whatever reason. Go ahead and put in this shaft to center the driven gear, big boy. All right. And then your axle spins this and there's your reduction. Pretty good teeth mate, not a whole lot of slop. This gear's offset, right? Because it's a six inch portal. Never had sixes, but wanted to try them. Uh, there's a good bit of space around here to hold oil. Nice drain plug at the very bottom to get all the gunk out. Uh, there's the gasket. The gaskets do look pretty good. They're pretty improved. 
Um, yeah, pretty, pretty solid looking. And then you have your special recessed nut. Now this is a Pioneer 1000 nut and I was worried I had to order these. However, it screws on to both of my Rubicon axles. These are some Rubicon front and rear axles right here. So that's very convenient. So I have the nut I need. Um, so let me show you what this looks like. So these guys fit the Rubicon rear axles, which means I think I got Pioneer 500 front gears. So in a Pioneer 500, you should have big splines and small splines. I just got the gears with the small splines, but let's go ahead and check this nut fitment. Make sure we get the right nut and it goes down flush and everything like that. Ooh, I think it's bottoming out early. Oh, it's supposed to do that. Maybe. I don't know. Got to figure that one out. I'm not sure if that's right or not. I might have to get the other nuts. These might be too long. This is why you fit check everything, guys. Uh, I'm sure I could make that work with the old grinder, but I'm probably going to order a set of Pioneer 500 nuts just to be safe in case they're different than the 1000 nuts. Yeah, so you don't have a whole lot of thread pushing through. Yeah, see, I was bottoming out against that chamfer in there. Interesting. So maybe I do need the Pioneer 500 nuts because that might stick out far enough to hit the cap. You can see here, you can move up the shaft in there. That's as far as they'll go in. So it is the right thread. It's just bottoming out a little early. So got to look into seeing if I can get the Pioneer 500 nuts as well. Uh, so that's good to know. Also, I got some portal blood. I don't know if they're sending these with all the portals now or if my buddy hooked me up with it. Um, I'll put the information about the shop I used to order these through and all of that stuff in the um, description. But I, I use Rich. He's out here by Holopal. We ride with him all the time. He's a cool guy. And he got me these things shipped to my house in one day. Uh, so definitely recommend him for quick shipping and good prices and everything. Um, yeah, so portal blood. It says, I always said this stuff is a scam. But one thing on here does sound really good to me. It reduces seal pressure. So this stuff doesn't get aerated and uh, get bubbly, which apparently puts less pressure on your seals which is important because portals don't have breathers, right? They're a totally sealed unit. So pressure does get put on the seals um, pretty much all the time, right? As the air in there gets hot, there's positive pressure uh, relative to the outside. And then once you hit water and it cools down, you get a, you know, a slight negative pressure. Not really, negative pressure doesn't exist. You get a slight vacuum. Um, so that puts pressure on the seals, which can make them go bad. So if this helps with pressure on the seals, this will help your seals last longer, so it could be good. It says also condition seals and demulsifies water. I don't know what that means really. Um, but looking at it, it looks like a pretty thin oil compared to regular 8098, which is recommended in these. So of course I'll give it a shot and let you guys know how it works. I've reassembled the portal with the P500 gear. Everything went in fine. You can see that tightens down flush with the P500 gear in there. Did confirm that these Pioneer 1000 nuts will not work with the P500 top gears. It just doesn't sit down there far enough, and you can see that cover is hitting the nut. So I got to order those nuts, and I got to get the other two correct gears today. Won't be a problem. We've got an excellent hookup for this stuff. All right, there's the Super ATV Gen 3 6-inch portal on the scale. 30.1 pounds. Now, this is without gear oil in it, without the brake rotor and hub, which is really heavy, and back plates and stuff. So usually I say the portal is routing 50 pounds per wheel. We're going to measure all my stuff and see exactly with these custom brackets, but... Adding portals adds a lot of unsprung weight. That is the one real downside, um, other than the extra maintenance and extra seals and stuff, but that's why it affects your handling so much, and the bike doesn't want to water really, usually, and all kinds of other stuff, because you're adding a lot of unsprung weight, a lot of pressure on your ball joints, so keep in mind, portals add weight. Internal gear reductions don't add any weight.